round and round and round, round and round and round. All the ducks are swimming in the water. Hello again, 2018. Start to a new year. You know what they say? New year, new project. Oh yes, I'm that sad. So what am I gonna do this time? Well, it's like this, I read a book. Well, I'm still reading this book actually because it's quite a big fat book, look. Ardennes Offensive, very interesting. Well, before Christmas, Empress Miniatures decided to release the 28 mil Volks Grenadier range. Perfect figures for fighting Ardennes battles. They've already got a good range of Americans, which I know they're gonna to add to as well. And I thought, ah, oh, these Germans look quite nice. I'll order the six packs that they've got in their release and see what they're like. And if I feel inspired, then that's a project for the new year. I ordered them. I felt inspired. I felt inspired enough actually to do a review because they are really lovely figures. So here we go. What do you get? Well, each pack contains four figures. They are priced at seven pounds retail, I do believe. I think the machine gun teams might be more, but I will check on that before the end of the video. Seven pounds, yes, I know. People say, oh, it's a lot of money. No, 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 pay that much money for figures. Uh, but they are really, really nice figures. You pay your money, you takes your choice. In this case, you're paying for the quality and the quality is really quite high. The figures themselves are sculpted by Paul Hicks. For people that know Paul Hicks, they know that he's a very, very good sculptor. I've worked with Paul in the past and some of the stuff he's turned out for me has been absolutely amazing. I think these are possibly some of the best figures that he's done for a while. I don't know, perhaps it's the period that he enjoys doing, I don't honestly know, but they really are lovely figures. So, what we'll do, I'll open the packs up, we'll spread them out all over my desk and we'll have a look at them one by one and then we'll make some comments and then at the end I'll, I'll recap and, you know, cover a few bits and pieces. So, here we go. First off, Volks Grenadier from Empress Miniatures. A quick review. Okay, so first off, we've got pack VG1. Uh, these are Volks Grenadier armed with this Sturmgewehr 44. That's the German assault rifle that was introduced later in the war. Now they wear a variety of different bits and pieces of clothing. As you can see, they've got great coats. They've got sort of later pattern uniforms on. Um, I'll go into more detail about the uniforms and things when I do a short painting article. Let's go in a little bit closer and have a look at all this uh, marvelous detail that Paul's managed to sculpt into these. Look at that, you know, grenades in his belt. He's got the strap on his assault rifle. All the equipment you expect to see on the back, like his canteen, his gas mask canister, his water bottle. Careful painting is gonna make these look absolutely brilliant. I'm really quite looking forward to having a go at them. There we go. Really nice faces as well. Another thing I really like about Paul's figures is he does really good faces and you can get a lot of sort of character into them with a careful paint job. Okay, so that's pack one. Let's look at pack two. Okay, pack VG2, Volks Grenadier armed with a Gewehr 43 rifle. Once again, four figures, rifle armed, like I said earlier. I've undercoated one because like I said before, I'm gonna use him in a painting demonstration as well. So you're gonna to get to two videos I will do later on, give you an idea how to sort of paint the uniforms and things on the figures as well. Yeah, once again, assorted variations on clothing. They've got guys that have got the Zelt barn on over the top of their normal kit. This guy's got his hood up over the top of his helmet. Really, really, really lovely figures once again. Okay, let's have a close up look at these guys and uh, Oh, shift the others out of the way, so get a bit more room to move with. There we go. This is the one I was talking about. He's got the Zelt barn wrapped around him. There you go. It's sort of the flat bit at the front and the buttons and things on it to hold it all together. Careful bit of painting on that one. In the old splitter tarn camo, that's going to be quite, <laughs> quite a job to try and do that one. But I'll have a go. I like a challenge. There you go, there's the chap here. He's got his shortened jacket on with his uh, hood up over his helmet. Yeah, clutching a grenade in his hand, ready to chuck it and go storming in. And this uh, fellow on the end here, he's got that crisscrossed um, 
helmet camo cover on the top. They can sort of stick tree branches and things into it. And he's got a smock top on. It's got the lacing down the front. Look at that, look. You could paint that one either in the splitter tire camo or you could paint it white and have it as like a snow top if you're going to go for like a winter offensive uh, battle of bulge sort of type of look. And the uh, Gewehr 43 rifle. Excellent stuff. Here we are, it's pack VG3. Now these figures are armed with the standard German Car 98 rifle. And once again, good mix of equipment. Another good thing you notice about these poses is they've only good patrolling poses. Then there's sort of a lot of standing and firing figures. They all seem to be sort of warily advancing and keeping an eye on what's going on. Really quite nice. Okay, let's have a close up look at these ones as well. Here we go. It says before you can see there, like on his, on his helmet there, there's a mold line you need to clean up. And it's like I was saying, that's about all you're gonna get by the way of sort of flashing things on these figures. Nothing more sinister than that. He's got his collar of his great coat turned up to keep himself warm. I think my boys are probably gonna see service um, Battle of the Bulge, I think. I quite fancy doing some American opposition for them and uh, I've got a sneak suspicion we're going to see more Americans and paras coming from Paul for this as well. I'd really love to do Soviets at some stage as well. And uh, Empress assure me they will be coming out too. So that's that one there. And there we go. Look at that. And he's ready with his rifle. Straps on the rifle. Bolt on the rifle. Oh my word. Look at that. So cool. <laughs> a grenade stuck on with the entrenching tool. I mean... It's the lovely little touches like this that bring these figures to life. Really are superb. Another guy in his help barn. There we go, like I was saying about cleaning the figures up. It's, it's mold lines and nothing more. There we are. And here's a really nice advancing guy. You see that he's got like a a smock top on over the top of his great coat. So once again, you could paint that up in uh, the splitter tan camo, or you could paint that up in white and have it as like a snow top. Wonderful figures. Pack VG4. Now this is a command pack for very different figures, um, mostly clutching very different weapons by the look of it. So we'll go through them one at a time. Perhaps we'll zip it straight across to the macro action and look at them in more detail, but uh, four very nice and very usable figures. Let's have a close up look at them. Now this guy is great. It's a really, really good pose. Shouting wildly at the rest of his men. He's got his uh, Sturmgewehr 44 uh, machine pistol. And he's sort of kneeling, putting his weight on his back foot yelling he's got the old field cap on and one of the short ski jacket type tops lovely figure in more officer type clutching his binoculars he's also armed with a stone guerrilla assault rifle variety of bits and pieces of kit and he's got his map case uh, on his belt as well Oh, turn it back around. There we go. It's got a helmet cover on over the top of his helmet. And nicely detailed sort of tunic. So he's in a more regular type of uniform. Which makes it easier to sort of paint up and put some sort of markings and things on him. There we go. You're always going to end up with some guys armed with these. Panzerfausts. I wouldn't fancy creeping in close to an American Sherman or a Russian T-34 clutching that thing in my hands. He's actually got an MP40 on his back, the old Schmeiser machine pistol. And his backup weapon. There you go, look at that. He's got his steel helmet strapped to his belt. He's also in the old field cap too. Great coat. Lovely figure. And last of all, we've got another NCO type. 
also armed with the MP40 Schmeiser machine pistol. He's also got a big sort of pack on his side there. Various other bits and pieces of kit. And he's in the smock top too. There you go, a really useful set of command figures. Right then, VG5, this is the MG42 team, moving and firing. MG42 as in the uh, light machine gun, so. There we go, four figures, like the other ones. You've got a team actually prone firing the weapon, and a team actually moving forwards with the weapon. So you can split into two groups quite nicely. Okay, let's have a close up look at these. Right then, start off with the MG42 Gunner, actually prone, firing a the weapon. And there we go, it's a really nice rendition of the uh, MG42 machine gun. There we go, and it has got a little, ooh, can you see it there, biped mount that will go on the front of the gun just under there. There's a little hole for it to fit into. There he is, same level of detail on, he's got all his equipment. And alongside him, you've got the ammo carrier and loader. Again, a really nice figure. You see, he's got the belts of ammo around his neck. All the kit like the other figures. And he has like a little ammo box. Oh. That you can lay down with him. And he's got a Little belt of ammo as well that you can actually put into the side of the gun. So when he's sort of laying down. Ooh, see how you can see the ammo feeding into it. Okay, move them across to there. Then we've got the moving team. And there's the moving gunner himself. Oh, keep him in focus a bit. There he goes. He's got a belt of ammo draped around his neck. He's got a pistol holster there, like his secondary weapon. All the bits and pieces you'd expect him to have. And he's moving forward at sort of quite a determinate little angle. So that's... There we go. And there's the number two carrying the ammo. He's got this strange setup where the Boxes appear to be attached to his webbing kit on a couple of straps, which must be really awkward to carry them, but uh, that's apparently the way they did it. There he is, he's got a smock on. Rifle over his shoulder, and all the other bits and pieces you'd expect him to have. So there we go. That's those. And the last pack in this release is VG6, and that's the MG42 team. And it's actually tripod mounted for sustained fire. Now, here we go. One, two, three, four figures again. You've got the team actually firing the gun and the team moving it. So once again, it's two separate teams, which is quite nice. This one's a little complicated because it does require some assembly, so. As you can see from this little part of bits and pieces here, the gun itself is a really beautiful little kit and uh, it's gonna take a little bit of skill to try and stick it together. Uh, hopefully Empress will provide instructions because I'm not entirely certain where all those little bits go, but I'll have a look at the sort of completed one and see if I can figure it out. Okay, let's have a close up look at this one. Okay, let's start off with the firing team, and this is the gunner himself. I presume when he's set up, the gun is sort of like that. And he's bracing it up against his arm. There we go. Got a really quite a nice face on this figure. Got a smock kind of top on, could be a parker. Either way, it's going to be painted up in some kind of weird camo pan. Probably split at tar like most of the stuff was. He 
here's the loader himself. He's got the box already sort of in with him on the ground there. Rifle slung over his shoulder there. All these bits and pieces on his back. I like the way the lid of the ammo box sort of comes out from under his arm. Look at that. <clears throat> he has a separate arm. And once it's sort of glued in position, it's going to be feeding the ammo belt out. And that will go into the side of the gun on the tripod mount. Clever little bit of design, that. That means you get that really beautifully detailed little figure. There we go. The gun itself, like I said, it's a, it's a complicated selection of little bits and pieces. Some very, very tiny bits here. A bit of careful study and I could figure out exactly where everything goes with. There's that uh, really nice MG42 model. Oh, if I put it flat you might better see it a bit better. There we go. That's a really nice model. Okay, and then we have the moving team. So we've got the gunner himself. There we go. Gun over his shoulder. Bipod folded attached to the end there. And again, he's got his belts of ammo around his neck. Have you got something ready for when they sort of first go down? Carry an ammo box. Plenty of bits and pieces of kit on him as well. Really nicely detailed. And I know I think this one's my favourite of the whole bunch, and I don't know why. <laughs> he's just got this sort of war weary look to him. There we are. He's got his forage cap on, his helmet sort of attached to his back, tripod for the gun strapped across his back, along with his rifle, and he's got a zelt barn arrangement over the top of his great coat. And I just really like the way he's just sort of trudging forwards, little packles carrying all his weight. Him and the gunner combined make up a really nice team. And there we go. Hmm, interesting. Well, so there you have it. Just a quick review to cover a few points and then you have a good close up look at the figures. What can I say? They are really, really good. I'm really glad I bought them. Uh, a couple of things I need to clear up. I said there were £7 a pack. Yes, they are £7 a pack, apart from the last pack that's got the MG on a tripod. That's £8, and that's probably due to the fact that it's got lots of fiddly little bits in it. Are they worth £7 a pack? Yes, they are. They are lovely figures. They're well sculpted, beautifully detailed, and they're well cast. In fact, there's no flash on these figures at all. Something that other manufacturers could learn from, because some of the garbage that I get sent in the post is absolutely unbelievable, the amount of flash and crap that's all over them. I think Empress used Griffin to do their casting, and it shows. So you pay that little bit of a premium for them, but you're paying for the fact that they are beautifully sculpted figures, and they're extremely well cast figures. Someone who's got the time to give them a really good paint job, you're going to be so pleased with the finished results. As you saw in that review, though, I've got a couple of them primed up, ready to go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video of each one as I'm painting it. So you can get an idea of how I do things, faces, bits and pieces, that sort of thing, you know. I know there's loads of them out there on the internet, but it might be quite nice to see what other people do, because you might learn something, and again, you might not. One of them I'm going to do in this splitter tarn pattern camouflage. Oh my God, I'm not looking forward to that. But I can give a sort of running review of how to do it and some idea of what colours and things to use. The other guy's got a great coat and he's going to be simply just being, I don't know, the old field grey uniform colours I should think be easiest thing to do. So anyway, that's it for me for this time round. Keep an eye out and next one out we're probably going to be me doing the painting on those two figures so I'll give you an idea of how to paint your Volks Grenadiers. So uh, all I need to say is a happy new year, a happy new painting year, a happy new modelling year and a happy new gaming year. And here's uh, looking forward to seeing what everybody else is producing this year for us gamers. Bye for now.